autoimmune is something that is thrown around so much, you know, in today's world, which basically just they're saying, hey, your body's attacking itself. Well, instead of just trying to treat something with a pill, why don't we begin to start thinking about what is the root cause? What could potentially be causing whatever this inflammation is that is going on throughout the body? Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode on the Champion Life Podcast. My name's Kurt Tucker, as you guys know. So today I got a good one for you. Today is something that I love to talk about, which is how to help people get in the best shape of their life. You know, I've spent the last 20 years pretty much, you know, every day working out. And one of the things that I have love about working out, and you'll hear me say, is that I believe wholeheartedly that fitness is the best Prozac, the best drink, the best drug that you can ever, you know, take, right? And so today I want to talk to you about the three biggest tips, the three biggest things that I've identified in my life and working with other thousands of other people in the last 12, 13 years in my fitness business career that have 100% helped people go next level in their fitness. And so today I want to encourage you to, you know, participate in this podcast with me today. Okay. Meaning, you know, take some notes, identify where you're at right now in your fitness journey and look at your life. Ask yourself the question, you know, where am I at? You know, where's my energy level at? You know, how do I feel on a daily basis? When I take a look at myself in the mirror, you know, how do I feel emotionally, physically, all those different things, you know, because I believe that when you can identify where you're at in your physical life, now we can set some new goals, right? We can begin to start looking at things and say, hey, you know what, here's where I'm at. I'm 20 pounds overweight. Uh, Here's where I'm at. I don't really feel very good about myself maybe physically or emotionally maybe i don't feel good meaning i don't have any energy i just uh, it's it's tough to get through the day on a daily basis and so if you lead a busy life like myself with four kids three businesses you know obviously uh you know marriage all these different things it requires a large amount of one word that I want to talk a lot about today as I talk about the three tips, and that is energy. See, everything breaks down to energy. We break down to energy when you really, really think about it. You know, have you ever heard yourself say or had somebody else say, can you feel that person's energy? right? When somebody walks into the room, you can almost feel that person's energy, whether it's a negative energy, it's a vibrant energy. There's people in my life uh, that when they walk into the room, I'm like, man, like this person's energy I love. One thing I've heard said one time is that, is your energy contagious? Is your energy worth catching? right like a like a disease like a cold like you know you don't want to have that but man if i can catch some great energy from somebody and that's why there's the saying that who you hang out with really truly matters right because when you surround yourself with people that have great energy they're talking about ideas they're talking about goals they're talking about you know how you can go next level in your life you naturally want to be around those type of people versus people that are maybe downers, they're complainers, they are, the world is just always against me. It's a glass, you know, half empty mentality, right? So, you know, everything really breaks down to energy. So today I'm gonna talk to you about the three things that I've found that have 100% increased my energy, 100% helped me be in the best shape of my life at 41 years young, And I want to pass them on to you. And I have derived this information from working with thousands of people in the fitness industry, you know, as I've owned gyms, as I've represented different, you know, nutritional companies, as I have worked with different, you know, people in, 
their health and their fitness, there's certain things that I have found that it's like, without a shadow of a doubt, when we've implemented these strategies, if you will, it is 100% been a game changer. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about today is intermittent fasting. Okay, because we understand when we begin to start looking at how do we build a healthier body, we, we immediately want to go to working out, right? And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But I want to talk to you about how you feed your body. What you are consuming on a daily basis is either giving you energy or it's taking energy away from you, okay? There are certain foods that when you put them in your body, you feel like you just got filled up, right? Like you have this abundance of energy that you can go and do whatever it is that you like to do, right? Versus there's certain foods that when you go and you slam down a Big Mac and a large fry with a Coca-Cola, that literally an hour later, you feel lethargic, you feel like you need to take a nap, no different than after a Thanksgiving meal right on Thanksgiving. So, you know, why I like to talk so much about intermittent fasting is because for so many years, the mindset that I lived by when it came to nutrition from my wife competing and from training people and just kind of growing up in the fitness world was that you needed to eat six meals a day that you need from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to bed, you need to be eating. That's what's going to speed up your metabolism. That's what's going to fuel your body, all these different things. And, you know, one thing that I saw happen with a lot of people that I knew is that they were having a lot of gut issues, right? They were having a lot of these, you know, things that, you know, the doctor would say, hey, you know, it's just, we don't really know, you know, in today's world, you know, we call these, you know, these things disease, right? And disease really is coming from inflammation, right? All disease, pretty much the root cause is some type of inflammation in your body. And so many times when you look at a person and you look at their gut, which we know is where their immune system lives, right? That's where your immune system lives we can begin to start looking at the gut and we can start to see that there's a lot of problems, whether it's leaky gut, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, when you go to the doctor and they're like, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, and they begin to just start throwing stuff out there, right? You know, autoimmune is something that is thrown around so much, you know, in today's world, which basically just, they're saying, hey, your body's attacking itself. Well, instead of just trying to treat something with a pill, why don't we begin to start thinking about what is the root cause? What could potentially be causing whatever this inflammation is that is going on throughout the body? And so I want to share with you something what I've learned is called energy diversion and how that goes along with intermittent fasting. So if you are wanting to get in the best shape of your life, we all know that we can't out train a bad diet. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm really starting with nutrition in this episode today, because I believe that if you go to the gym and you work out six days a week, seven days a week for two hours a day, which I am not going to recommend that. And I'm going to share a little bit more with you here in a second. You know, but if you begin to start understanding the importance of nutrition and how it plays a role in you getting into the best shape of your life, in you looking better, feeling better, performing better, having incredible energy, never getting sick. You know, one of the things that I have noticed, and I was actually just talking with my wife the other day about this, is I can't believe how so many people are getting sick all the time and their kids are sick and all these different things. And I'm like, man, like our family's always well. I always feel amazing every single day, never get sick. And I'm thankful for that. And, and, and I believe that my faith has a lot to do with that. But also I believe that it's how I take care of my body. And by the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you really what my day to day looks like when it comes to fitness nutrition and things of that nature. So, you know, intermittent fasting and energy diversion. Why intermittent fasting? Well, here's what I believe to be true and what I found out in my life is that when I stepped away from the old mindset of I need to eat all day long from the moment that I get up to the moment that I go to bed, my body began to start feeling 
better, healthier, more energy, lighter. My joints were not aching anymore. Like I just felt so amazing. And so I like to do a 16-8 fast. Here's what that means, okay? Because a lot of times when you hear intermittent fasting, it's like, what does that mean? How do I do that? Well, here's what I do is I will just choose to eat the the calories that I need to consume on a daily basis. And let's just say it's 2000 calories, okay? You know, I choose to eat those calories in a eight hour window so that the other 16 hours of the day, my body is in a fasted state. Now, what is the benefit of being in a fasted state? The biggest benefit is this, is that when you are in a fasted state, your body is more likely to burn fat for energy. See, your body is always going to use three sources for fuel to burn energy. The first is glycogen. I like to say carbohydrates, right? You know, but it, it's glycogen and glycogen is stored up in your muscles and your liver. And so when you need to, to live, when you need to walk, when you need to work, when you need to just do all the basic functions of life, generally what happens is your body is going to be living off of glycogen, okay, or I like to say once again, carbohydrates, you know, and so what happens is, is when your body is constantly in a mode of burning glycogen or carbohydrates for energy, and it never gets the opportunity to burn fat for energy, we begin to store fat, we begin to gain weight. And so in my business, when I talk to somebody who comes to me and says, hey, listen, you know, here's my goals. And, you know, I, I put him on, you know, a uh, evil machine, which is what we use or an in body. And we can see that, hey, you're at 35 percent body fat and you're about 50 pounds overweight. Well, they didn't gain that 50 pounds, you know, overnight. Right. What happened was they gained five to 10 pounds over the last five years. And next thing they know, that's where they're at. And maybe that's where you're finding yourself at right now. Maybe this identifies with you. And if if, and if that's the case, that's okay, because I'm going to give you the solution right now of what you, you know, need to do that literally will work. I, I can promise you that. So what happens is when we set our body up to begin to start burning fat for energy, now all of a sudden, you know, our body is like a, like a rocket ship. I'm telling you. So here's how I do this: is it's a 16-8 fast. Now there's a lot of other different fasting that you can do. You can extend that fast to 20 hours, maybe 24 hours. You can do extended fast of one day, two day, three day, five days, and there's a lot of benefits to that. The purpose of today's podcast is I just want to talk about 16-8 fasting. So essentially what this looks like, because I want to give you a very practical way to do this, okay, is that the night before, if my last meal is at say seven o'clock and I'm having dinner with my family, then what I want to do is, you know, the next morning, okay, I won't try, I won't break my fast until about 11 o'clock okay maybe if my dinner the night before was at six o'clock let's just say then i'm gonna try to not break my fast until 10 o'clock the next morning that's gonna be a total of 16 hours so sometimes when i talk 16 8 fast with people they're like oh my gosh how, how can you know that's 16 hours it's like well if you're sleeping eight hours of that then automatically that makes it that much easier right and so if you eat dinner at seven o'clock the night before or six o'clock, then if you think about it, you know, for the next three or four hours as you're sitting there, you know, maybe hanging out with the family, watching, you know, some TV, you know, being active, you know, go for a walk after dinner, which is a great thing to do, by the way, um, you know, then you sleep and then you wake up in the morning most of us are trained we need to eat something right like breakfast is the most important meal of the day well number one that is sold to us from the food companies from the mcdonald's and all those things if you go back hundreds of years and you look at all the people that were lean that weren't 
obese that didn't have a lot of the diseases that you see today they didn't wake up and immediately eat they didn't wake up and immediately go through you know a drive through to get you know a egg mcmuffin or eat a bowl of cereal filled with sugar or whatever no like they woke up and they literally hunted all day long uh, and maybe eat a couple meals a day, right? And they were out there burning energy all day long trying to, to hunt for food. So breakfast is not the most important meal of the day, you know, because of you need to eat right away. Now, I would say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day based because what you're putting in your body first thing you know, as you're breaking your fast is very important, okay, to give your body what it needs, but it's not because you should eat first thing in the morning, all right? So what I will typically do, guys, is a 16-8 fast so that my body has the ability in the morning hours as I'm doing things, my devotion, you know, spending time getting the kids ready for school, all those different things for those first three, four, five hours of my day after I've rose, you know, my body is still in a fat burning mode. Because remember this, your body's going to burn three sources of fuel for energy. It's going to burn glycogen, it's going to burn fat, and it's going to burn muscle, okay? So if I can set my body up to burn fat for energy more often, I am naturally going to become leaner. I'm naturally going to become, I'm going to have more energy because my body's not going to be so lethargic from a lot of the carbohydrates that we feed ourselves. And once again, I have nothing against good, clean carbohydrates, but when we're putting the wrong carbohydrates, the refined sugars and all those different things in our body, a lot of the grains, a lot of the things that are sprayed, that are fortified and all those different things, like we are literally causing a massive amount of inflammation in our body. And so most of the foods that we're, we're consuming these days have so much crap in it. Can I encourage you to just turn the label around look for things like enriched right look for things you know like you know the reds the blues the dyes you know all those different things in your 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 stuff look for different sweeteners like the sucraloses and the aspartames you know all the different things that literally when we consume stuff that our body was never really designed to take in immediately we have what's called an inflammation response, all right? So if we know that inflammation is the root cause of pretty much all disease, but we constantly are putting things in our body that are triggering an immune response, triggering inflammation, well then the, the moment that you know I work with people and I get them to quit putting things in their body that are triggering those things, which the biggest ones are seed oils, okay? you know, any type of canola oil, vegetable oil, any of those types of oils, any type of uh, enriched sugars, you know, all that kind of stuff, and the artificial sweeteners. Those are the big three that I'm looking for when I sit down with most people. Like, hey, let's look at your diet. What are you consuming? So when I'm fasting, the major benefit that I've learned through intermittent fasting and giving myself that four or five extra hours every single day that normally before I would wake up and I would eat eggs and a bowl of oatmeal and some fruit and some orange juice, maybe go work out. Now I say, hey, listen, I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to have, and this is what I do, some water, you know, with some lemon and maybe a little bit of apple cider vinegar, you know, which is going to be great for digestion for my body. It's going to be great for detoxifying my body, all those different things. And then maybe an hour later, I'm going to have some super clean, organic coffee. Coffee is going to help with burning fat. It's going to help with just getting my metabolism rocking in the morning, but it's got to be a super clean coffee. Okay. I use pure roast uh, because it, it's organic. It's less acidity. You know, coffee is one of the most highly pesticide sprayed crops out there. So if you're going to fast in the morning, you want to make sure that what you're putting in your gut, all right, is not something that is unclean. All right. Now there's a lot of things that can break your fast, right? Really anything with calories, 
you know, but anything that would, you know, trigger basically a glucose spike, you don't want. All right. So a lot of times I just tell people just stick to to water with a little bit of lemon, all right? Or you can have some black coffee, nothing in it. You can't go put the creamers in there, the sugars in there, all that kind of stuff. Because once again, I want to make sure that my body is burning fat for energy. So if I begin to start triggering the digestive system, then all of a sudden I'm breaking that fast, right? So generally I will fast until about 11 o'clock. Now, before I share with you one of my secrets that I absolutely believe to be true to really help your body like burn fat like a maniac, I wanna share one thing with you. I've mentioned energy diversion. Here is one of the major reasons why you will have so much more energy while you're fasting. You will notice that in the morning you feel amazing. It's because your body has to spend and exert so much energy to digest food, okay? The moment that now we're not eating all the time, okay, now what happens is our body can spend that same amount of energy that normally it would be spending to break down food, and now it can spend it to heal the body. That is one of the major reasons why I will do a longer term fast you know, once a week, maybe I'll do a 24 hour fast, which just simply means dinner to dinner. Hey, if my dinner was at seven o'clock the night before, the next day I will string out that fast and I will go a little bit longer to dinner, okay? And every once in a while, I'll do an even longer fast, like a two or a three day fast. And I wouldn't recommend you start there, okay? This is something I've been doing for a lot of years that has helped me get healthy. See, when I went through mercury poisoning, and I'll save that for a different episode, that story is in my book, by the way, but I had to learn all these different things to get my body healthy because of how sick I was. And so when I sought out Dr. Dan Pompa, who in my opinion is the number one doctor in the world on detoxification, one of the best when it comes to fasting and ultimately getting your body healthy, restoring your body, renewing your body. This is where I learned all these things. These are where my belief systems begin, you know, begin to shift from the old way of doing things, which was eat all day and, you know, all that kind of stuff to really beginning to understand, huh, you know what? This really makes sense. When I'm not eating and consuming food all day, and my body doesn't have to spend all that energy, if you will, to break down those foods. And instead, it can now begin to burn fat for energy and also can begin to use that energy to heal the body. This makes absolute sense. And so when you go on a longer type of fast, like one day, two day, three days, now all of a sudden magical things start to happen in your body. Inflammation begins to just go away. New stem cells begin to create. Your blood sugar gets begins to start getting, you know, very balanced out. Healing begins to start taking place in so many different things. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. So where I encourage people to start though, is just with a basic 16-8 fast, where if you will just learn to fast from going to bed at seven o'clock and then the next morning, instead of eating, just, you know, having some water with lemon and then some clean black coffee and allow the first three or four hours of your day to not be consuming food like the food companies want you to do, right? Going through McDonald's, having the pop tarts or even a bagel or coffee at Starbucks or whatever, skip that. You're not only going to save yourself some money, but also your body's going to thank you. Now, that's the first thing. Here's the second thing. When you go and you actually work out fasted, when you get a workout. So a lot of times people ask me, Kurt, when's the best time to work out? And, you know, I have learned this from myself. I can tell you a story that, you know, for me, when I began to start working out fasted, because I, I just, that was a, a concept that I just really, to be honest with you, didn't believe like, there's no way if I work out first thing in the morning, or even after three or four hours of being up, and I haven't ate anything, I'm not going to be strong, I'm going to be weak, am I going to pass out, like, all these different things. 
And what I began to start realizing was, no, all those things are different. Actually, there's a lot of science. And I would encourage you, go search for this. Go look at the science. Look at guys like Thomas DeLauer, right? You know, he's one of the guys that I love to follow that just is absolutely incredible when it comes to the body, fasting, the science of it, all these different things. And the dude's jacked. Right. You know, so sometimes people say, oh, but if you work out and you're fasted and you have an eight, you're looking, you're going to lose muscle and all these different things. And it, it's just not true. You can have plenty of muscle. OK, because while you're working out fasted, your body's going to release a lot of HGH and a lot of other different things. You know, your body knows how to take care of itself. Right. As long as you're consuming the right things the rest of the day, your body's going to have what it needs to make sure that it's going to be able to maintain lean muscle. It's going to be able to give your body what it needs. So I like to just work out in the morning for a couple different reasons. Number one, if I'm fasted, OK, now what happens is when you work out in the morning, before you've ate anything, all right, and you understand that your body burns those three sources of fuel for energy, glycogen or AKA carbohydrates, you know, fat and then muscle. If my body doesn't have a lot of carbohydrates to burn through, okay, it's automatically gonna tap into my fat storages, okay, which most of us have plenty of those. So we want our body to, to start tapping into those fat storages to burn for fuel, okay? So now I know that if I am fasted in the morning and I go and I get a workout in, whether it's 20 or 30 minutes on the treadmill, because my split that I like to follow is I love to work out every day. You know, it's while I'm working out, I love to, you know, review my goals, look at my journal, watch a podcast, watch a YouTube video on something that I'm trying to grow and learn in as, a, as an entrepreneur or in my marriage or, you know, whatever. In that 30 minutes, I understand that while I'm doing a little hit cardio on the treadmill or I'm training weights, I know that my body is burning fat or energy. So I don't need to have hour and a half workouts because I'm working more efficiently to allow my body to get in the best shape, burn the fat that I don't want. And this has been such a game changer for myself and for so many other people that I've worked with over the years that when they begin to start adapting this lifestyle, they're like, holy cow. If you're an entrepreneur and you're listening to this, okay, I can tell you right now that, you know, we require a lot of energy, a lot of bandwidth to do the things that we do. I don't know about you, but for me, I, I run three different businesses. I own two gyms. I own a marketing and consulting company that I'm working with gyms all across the country. My coaching academy with, with Champion Life. You know, so there's a lot of stuff that's going on, a lot of moving parts, a lot of different meetings that I'm attending each day, podcasts I'm recording, coaching sessions, you know, all these different things where, you know, that energy for me, I want to be spent, you know, on the people that I am working with so that I can really give my best. And I can tell you that when I'm fasted, especially in the morning hours, I feel so much better because my body has that energy. Okay. And it's even a lot of proven science that the brain would love to burn off of fat. Right. You know, and I, I don't necessarily want to get into the topic of keto and not keto or whatever, you know, because once again, I do believe that we need to consume the right carbohydrates, you know, to allow our body to work efficiently. But all I'm saying is that you will notice a massive spike in energy when you begin to start intermittent fasting because your body just has more energy. So anyhow, I love to get a workout in the early hours of the day because I understand that when I get that workout in early in the day it's the reason why most of my fitness programs at my gyms are designed to get people in early for two major reasons number one is that i understand the science behind the body then if you can get a workout in early in the morning your body's going to be so it is like pouring gas on the fire guys if 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 you have a fire and it's burning right no different than if your body's burning fat in the morning because you're fasted and now next thing you know you pour some gasoline on that fire what happens well, that's essentially what happens when you go and you hit a workout while you're fast is you are really amplifying your body beginning to burn fat for energy, which is exactly what you want. 
The second reason why obviously I recommend that you work out early in the morning is because you're going to get it done. All right. You know, I always say early in the morning is, you know, there's less people vying for your time. But if you wait to work out in the afternoon or the evening, there's so many things that could potentially get in your way. Plus, I want that added benefit of working out early in the morning while I'm really getting my body rocking and rolling. And I get the benefit the rest of the day of my body burning extra calories because I worked out early. I, I really put myself in motion there, if you will. So keep it simple. So if you understand, hey, if I can just begin to start adapting a different lifestyle, okay, of beginning to start intermittent fasting and try this for a week, see what happens, all right? I'm telling you, you will feel absolutely amazing. Maybe the first day or two, it's gonna feel a little bit awkward, all right, because you're probably so used to doing certain things. Um, but all of a sudden, if you begin to just start implementing this, you know, into your lifestyle, you will feel absolutely amazing, okay? So 16-8 fast, I've shared with you the benefits today you know of this and then you know the second thing if you really want it the quickest way to get in the best shape is begin to get your workouts early in the morning earlier in the morning hours before you eat most importantly okay and you will begin to start really supercharging you know your body burning fat for energy and you will start to see your body lean out you will start to see your stomach now not, it'll just start to go away. A lot of women will say, Kurt, like, how do I get rid of this, this area that's so hard to get rid of? And it's really the hardest part for men as well. But a lot of that has to do with inflammation. A lot of that has to do with just things that are in your colon that need to be detoxified out. That's the reason why the lemon water and the apple cider vinegar in the morning is really great for you because it helps with detoxifying, removing, you know, just stuff. And every once in a while, you know, when you do a longer, you can do cleanses and I've done plenty of those in the years, but here's what I found out is I really don't need a cleanse. Okay. If I just stop eating and do a longer fast for a day or two, it's, it's, it's amazing how now all of a sudden I didn't need to consume a bunch of you know, pills and potions and all those things. My bad, my body naturally, because I gave it a rest and it knows what it needs to do, just naturally begin to start getting rid of things. Now, I think that there's certain things that you can absolutely do that can aid in it. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, I just think it's more of a, hey, listen, if you begin to just start doing the things we're talking about on a daily basis, not consuming so much, you know, garbage, you know, one of the things that I am, that's a big pet peeve of mine is that, you know, if somebody is constantly, you know, going on a program every three or six months or even every year where it's like, hey, I'm doing this new program and, you know, because I lost 15 pounds last year and now I gained it all back. So I got to do this new program again. Like, that's not what you want. Like, you should be able to get to a point. For me, I'm 6'1", 185, around that 12% body fat mark. And I stay there year round. I might fluctuate by three or four pounds. You know, it's because of, you know, I don't need a bunch of, you know, pills and potions and all those different things. Yes, do I supplement, but I supplement to all, you know, basically to fill in the nutritional gaps, right? But I don't need to do anything crazy, you know, once or twice a year, or three times a year to get my body back in great shape because of these daily disciplines of simple things like beginning to start intermittent fasting and be and just working out while I'm fasted in the morning where my body is burning a massive amount of fat for energy. And the things that I'm talking about with you today on this episode, friends, is sustainable. And that's the most important thing is that whatever you do on a daily basis, make it sustainable. My workouts aren't an hour long, all right? Most of them are 30 minutes. Why? Because that's sustainable. I can do that on a daily basis. Why do I intermittent fast? Because it's sustainable. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You know, even when I travel, I know if I jump on a plane, you know, that I don't have to eat. I'm not going to consume junk and put it in my body because I understand I'm not going to starve to death. Actually, I, I love when we travel and say we got an early morning flight and we got to drive to the Cincinnati airport, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from where I live. And we're flying to maybe Cancun on a vacation. Like 
I know that I don't have to eat anything until one or two o'clock until we get to our destination. So while I'm sitting there on the plane, working, doing whatever, like my body's burning fat for energy. And when I look around and I see so many other people consuming that morning snack that they give you, those pretzels or the little, you know, crackers that are just filled with a bunch of garbage and you know and a coca-cola or whatever and, and once again there's a difference between judging people and making a judgment and i love when my wife says this if you know better you should do better and once you know something once you see something you can't unsee it and so when i see this and i've learned this from my own you know life of how my body feels now living this lifestyle man i can't help but want other people you know to feel the same way, all right, to have the same energy level. And what's amazing is that when you begin to start adopting some of these things that we're talking about today, all of a sudden, you kind of realize that how you felt for so many years, you're like, wow, I didn't realize I felt that bad, all right? And the third thing and the last thing that I wanna share with you is this, is accountability. All right. Like that is the third quickest way to get yourself in the best shape of your life. Number one, intermittent fasting. Number two is work out fasted. And then number three is accountability. Like you have to have accountability, meaning, you know, or self-discipline, right? And self-discipline is doing what you know you should do even when you don't feel like doing it that's what champions do when i think about some of the the best entrepreneurs i know the best athletes that i know they are so committed and they don't live based upon their feelings but they live based upon their commitments they say here's the goal here's what i'm going for of course i'm going to want or desire or feel a certain way where I'm going to want to eat something I shouldn't or, you know, not work out or whatever, but they have the commitment. All right. And then they have people in their life, in their corner. All right. That hold them accountable that say, Hey, listen, here's what we're going to do. So if you don't have that, then I would encourage you get somebody, get a friend, get a coach, Tell somebody close to you your goal. Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Here's my game plan. I'm not saying go tell the world. I'm just saying let one or two people know, you know, hire a trainer. All right. You know, you know, you know do whatever you if, find a workout partner, somebody that has the same goals. Or if you need some actual, you know, professional help, get somebody to do that. It's one of the things that I love to do is take people to the next level in their fitness. It's just, here's what I've learned is we can go online, we can listen to podcasts like this, we can see all these different diet programs, you know, workout programs, all those different things. But if we don't follow through, in business, I like to say the fortune's in the follow through, right? Like we can set any goal, but if we don't follow through on it, you know, nothing happens. It's just a goal. We don't want to be a goal setter. We want to be a goal getter. We want to be a goal achiever, right? You know, so when you think about this is what do you need if you've tried to do it before or you've started a new program, but you haven't, you know, followed through on it and you didn't get the result, you weren't able to create the new you, if you will, then you might want to look at that. And I talk a lot about this in my book, being able to create this new identity, if you will, it's a new set point. All right. And I'll talk about that on a different episode. But if you weigh a certain weight, and you always seem to lose some weight, but then get right back to that weight, there's definitely some different things that you're going to need to do to create that new set point, that new identity, that new this is now for me. I used to walk around at 205 for many years. Now it's at 185, right? And this is a new set point that I've created for my body based upon the things that we've talked about today in this episode and based upon the things that I've found over the years to where, hey, my body feels so much better at 185 than it did at 205, right? So anyhow, I want to encourage you today, friends, all right? You know, begin to start looking at your life. How much energy do you have? How much do you have going on? And if you don't like the way you feel, you don't have the energy that you'd like to have, that maybe this, 
you know, these principles that we've talked about today might help you go next level in your fitness, all right? Might give you more energy, might make your body just that much more healthier. And I would love to hear some feedback on this episode today because this is one of the things that I am probably most passionate about, talking with people, helping people. And here's the reason why, friend, is because we all have a purpose. We all have a mission. We all have things that we are here on earth to do. And we are going to need our bodies. And we are going to need energy. And the older that we get, we should become wiser. All right. And the older that we get, we should want to take better care of our bodies so that we can be around for our purpose, for our family and things of that nature. And that is a whole nother subject when I talk about why fasting when it comes to, you know, your body and healing and living longer and all those different things. And maybe we'll talk about that on a later episode. But hey, thank you so much for today, champions. Look forward to talking with you on the next episode as I'm going to bring my wife back and we're going to talk about that third principle to creating breakthrough in your marriage. So for now, I would love to hear any comments today. Feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram or Facebook and keep crushing it, champions. Have an amazing day building your champion life and we'll talk soon. See ya. 